The most common type of approach in explaining how control valves work is to start off by pointing out that valves have a certain CV. We're not going to explain exactly what CV is here, that you can find elsewhere. But what usually gets explained is that control valves have a certain characteristic, meaning they can have something called a linear characteristic, an equal percentage characteristic, or a quick opening characteristic. What that's trying to tell you is that despite the fact that three different valves may have the exact same CV, when we talk about CV, we're talking about the valve when it is 100% open, the paths they take on getting to that CV at 100% vary. The thing I find a little bit inadequate is an explanation of why this is the case, because it's not as if these valves take these different paths by coincidence. They are designed, meaning the internal structures of the globe and the seat, they're precisioned to give you that kind of response, meaning we want them to do that. Before going into an explanation of why you would even use something like an equal percentage valve, I want to point out that I've worked in places where there have been equal percentage valves installed all around the place. And even though I might not understand or I may not have understood why those were chosen, I know by their data sheets that they do have an equal percentage characteristic. And so I often found myself doing calculations where I thought, okay, this valve is 50% open. What's the CV of the valve? That's what I want to explain today. Note that in this video, I use the term flow and CV quite loosely and interchangeably, and they don't mean the same thing, uh, but I wouldn't get stuck on that too much because flow and CV are proportional because CV is an indication of how much flow I can get through a valve. More CV, more flow, bigger valve. To understand the difference between a linear valve and an equal percentage valve, we are going to look at how the behavior changes even though the valves have the exact same starting point. Imagine I have two valves. One has a linear characteristic and one has an equal percentage characteristic. We will look at the valve opening percentage and we will look at the CV. Assume that both of them have a CV of 5 when they are open at 10%. Now imagine we increase the opening to 20% and both CVs go up to 10. Despite them looking identical at this point, they are not going to continue in the same way because I've told you their characteristics. The linear valve will carry on adding 5 to its CV for every additional 10% it opens. So at 30%, it goes up another 5 to a CV of 15. At 40% opening, it goes up another 5 to 20. I carry on like this until the valve is 100% open and I see that this valve has a CV of 50. The CV that is quoted on a datasheet is the 100% open or full bore CV value. So if you own this valve, you would be the proud owner of a CV50 valve with a linear characteristic. Now let's look at the equal percentage valve. By definition, equal percentage means that I add the same percentage of flow for every step change in valve opening. So when I open from 10% to 20%, my CV increases from 5 to 10, which means that my CV has doubled. In other words, I added an extra 100% of the CV for 10% opening. If I open to 30%, I need to add another 100% of the CV, which means at 30%, the CV goes up to 20. At 40% opening, the CV goes up another 100%, this time to 40. If I carry on like this, I will get to a valve CV at 100% opening of 2560. If you're thinking, wow, this is growing exponentially, then you are correct in the technical sense. This is an exponential curve. So this is a really big valve. 
This is the difference between a linear and an equal percentage valve characteristic. For a given step change in valve opening, a linear valve CV increases by the same amount, while an equal percentage valve CV increases by the same percentage. And that's where it gets its name. So you may think, okay, this equal percentage valve that we have here is huge and you proved your point. What about if I wanted a valve with a CV of 50, just like my linear valve, but now I wanted to have an equal percentage characteristic? What would that look like? Well, we stumble into a challenge here. You know how I started by defining the CVs of these valves at 10% opening and at 20% opening? Why didn't I start at 0% and 10%? To understand, let's have a look at the linear valve. The linear valve has an equation of the form y equals mx, where x is the valve opening in percent. This is from the generic equation for a straight line, y equals mx plus c, but I know that the valve CV is zero when the valve opening is zero because there's no flow through it. So c disappears. So I only need one combination of CV and valve opening to fully define the behavior of a linear valve. So for my linear valve, I see that the gradient here is 0.5. This is a really easy pattern to follow. So it's easy to see what happens between 0% opening and 10% opening. But what about the equal percentage valve? Well, just like the linear valve had a step change of 5 in CV, I have a step change of 100% of the CV. But assume I started at 0% opening. For the linear valve, all I had to do was add 5. But what do I do for the equal percentage valve? If the flow rate is 0 and I say, OK, I'm opening up to 10%, I need the flow to increase by 100% to carry on with the pattern. But 100% of 0 is still 0, so that doesn't help. That is why I couldn't start at 0%. So this initial step change is an additional parameter that needs to be defined up front in order for me to fully characterize the equal percentage valve. So you first need to know how much does the CV increase upon initial opening of the valve? And secondly, you need to know once it is open, what is the percentage increase in flow for a given step change in valve opening? So where a linear valve, there's only one variable I need to figure out, that's the gradient of the line, an equal percentage valve has two parameters I need to figure out if I want to get an equation. It is relatively quick to derive the equation of the equal percentage valve, but it may help understanding the derivation if we start by deriving the equation of the linear valve, even though it seems a little bit pointless. For a linear valve, the change in CV is proportional to the change in valve opening. So we call the proportionality constant M and the constant of integration C simply equals zero because we know that when the valve opening is zero, so is the CV just like we said earlier. For an equal percentage valve, the change in CV is proportional to the change in valve opening, just like for the linear valve, but it is also proportional to the CV itself. Integrating this actually lands you with the natural logarithm of CV equaling mx plus c, except this time we can't chuck away the constant of integration c because if we try and substitute the CV of zero for a valve opening of zero, we get an unsolvable equation. I cannot raise E to any power and then obtain zero. So I am stuck with both the M and the C. So I have two variables that I need to solve for, which also means that I need to know or define two points, meaning two pairs of valve opening and CV before I can fully characterize an equal percentage valve. The implication of this is that whereas there is only one possible linear characteristic valve with a CV of 50, 
There are theoretically infinite amounts of equal percentage files with the CV of 50, depending on how I define these parameters. Here I am showing three different ones, each with a different initial step change and a different percentage increase. But all of them follow the behavior I am describing in the beginning. The first valve has a constant 5.3% increase in flow for every additional percent valve opening. The second valve increases flow by 7.1% for every additional percent valve opening. And finally, the third valve increases the flow by 10% for every additional percentage opening. You can see that this percentage is constant as the valve opens to 100%. All of these curves have a slight problem in that they have an abrupt step change from 0 to 1%. But this again stems from the fact that there is no way that I can get an exponential expression to pass through the origin. But of course we know that even though it's not mathematically possible, it is the case in reality because the CV is 0 at 0% 0 opening. I actually went and found an example of an equal percentage valve in a data book from a valve supplier that states it's an equal percentage valve, but it isn't a perfect match with this equation. You can see that if it followed the equation perfectly, it would have a constant increase in CV of 48% for every additional 10% that the valve opens. But the actual change varies between 33 and 100%. This sounds ridiculous, but if you plot the valve supplier's curve with the theoretically perfect curve, you can see they're almost identical. So I thought this was quite interesting. If you have an equal percentage valve and you know how the CV changes as a function of valve opening, you can use my sheet to do the exact same exercise and see how much the real valve deviates from theoretically ideal behavior. In reality, it doesn't matter. The point is you can get a very good expression to know the CV of an equal percentage valve as a function of valve travel. So what I want to point out after this is that all of this is something I've derived myself in trying to understand how equal percentage valves function. There are other explanations one can find that are slightly different. Specifically, I'm thinking of the Spirex Sarko website, which has a relatively good site explaining equal percentage valve characteristics and the equation they use is slightly different and they get around the problem that the exponential curve doesn't go through the origin by defining something called an operability range meaning yes the valve can go from zero to hundred percent but we're only going to consider up from 10 to 20 percent up to hundred um, and and so the equation has a slightly different form it doesn't really matter because you can use my equation to fit to the same data. Know that if you're anywhere near 0 to 10%, it might not work that accurately. And besides, as we pointed out, go and look at what your valve's characteristics look like from a certain valve supplier. They may not fit this equation well at all, but it's close enough that it actually doesn't matter.